Hello and welcome to the Lofty Pursuits channel. Today we're not going to be in Tallahassee, Florida, and we're not even going to be at Lofty Pursuits. We're going to be on the road while we travel with Greg. In this series, I hope to take you around the country to cool places where candy is being made, and just cool experiences I've had that I hope to share with you. I figured I always bring a little history with my videos, and this time I'm going to bring some history into the videos by going to the history instead of just telling you about it. Today we're going across the river from Louisville, and we're going to go to Jeffersonville, Indiana, the home of the Shimps and Shimps Confectionery. Shimps Confectionery was opened in 1891 here in Jeffersonville, and Warren and Jill are the latest generation of the family to own and run the business. And together, they make Red Hots every day, and we're going to join them today. To any normal candy maker, their kitchen is like a second home. But this is doubly true for the Shimps, as they live one flight up from the candy store where the family has lived since 1901. This was a special treat when they invited me to make some Red Hots with them, the candy they're famous for. And I really enjoyed the opportunity and thanked them for their generosity. When you watch this video, you're going to see a lot of equipment that we don't have at Lofty Pursuits. Some of this is because of practical reasons, like the fact that we don't have natural gas coming into the building. But most of this is because Shimp's Confectionery has been around so long. I've often said we have the second largest collection of this equipment in the country being used to make candy. Well, the Shimp's have the first. The Shimp's work a little backwards from us because they just do drop candy, not image candy. They add the color to the pot and the flavoring on the table. And if you watch it, this is a very different way to make hard candies. I look carefully at everything and imagine my surprise when I found out that Warren has the same candy cooling table that we have at Lofty Pursuits. And it too was made in 1891. But in his case, that was the year that his store opened. The sugar has reached 315 degrees, and of course, since the food coloring has been in there for quite a while, all the water is already boiled out. Since he doesn't have to retain as much heat as we do to add the food coloring, he's pouring his sugar much thinner than we do, and that means it cools faster. Like all candy makers, Warren guards the sources of his flavors very, very closely. And his cinnamon oil is special. I'm unsure where he gets it, but it's different than what we get. Our cinnamon hearts are delicious, but his red hots are delicious in a different way. Where the candy has touched the metal bars, it has cooled off, but the center is still liquid and molten hot. And Warren needs to fold it all together to even out the temperature. The red sugar has no flavor until Warren adds the cinnamon oil. He does this and he calls it his ring of fire and it's such a wonderful burn. But he folds it in so every piece has a slightly different amount. And that makes a variety in the candy which you can't get with any other technique. Warren chases the cinnamon oil around the table and forces it back into the candy where it belongs. I've never folded flavor on the table like this before, and Warren gives me some tips and hands me the spatula and turns me loose. I love playing with candy. I am constantly reminded that I stand on the shoulders of giants. And Jill and Warren are two of the giants in the field, and their generosity knows no end. They, like me, I hope, want to make sure that these techniques are not lost, and we keep them alive by showing others, me with these videos and in my store, and them with the tradition that dates back well over a hundred years in their family. Don't worry, there's another generation waiting to pick up the mantle at some point. Warren doesn't have a candy heating table. He's got a heating hood. This is the traditional candy maker's equipment, and he's got a beautiful one that's still in perfect working order that he uses on a daily basis to keep his candy from cooling down too fast while he puts his candy through his rollers. Warren is using a Thomas Mills set of rollers here, and they're beautiful. They're also hooked to a motor by his own device, 
Sort of a concession to the mid-20th century. No matter where you make it, candy making comes down to touch. And you've got to feel the candy to check its temperature and to check its consistency before you put it in the machine or you fold it into a pattern. If you ever make it by Jeffersonville, Indiana, make sure you say hi to the shimps there. If you ever make it by Tallahassee, Florida, come into Lofty Pursuits and you can watch us make candy here in person too. And if you're interested, you can go to our website, www.pd.net, where we sell the candies we make, but not the candies the shimps make. I know you probably figured this out already, but Red Hots are the common name for cinnamon hard candies. They're not cinnamon drops unless they're dropped. And here goes Warren and Jill separating them into pieces. They work on a wooden surface, which is very traditional, but to make sure the candy doesn't stick, they've dusted it with a thin layer of granulated sugar. This also coats the candy in a really nice little sanded pattern. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us here on YouTube and like us on Facebook. You can also go to our website www.pd.net for more information and you can buy our candy that we make. We make a heart version of cinnamon drops that you can get there and you can also see a video of us making it in comparison here on YouTube. The link will be in the description below. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you again.